Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, comparing a Chevy Silverado LTZ with the Z71 package to a Toyota Tundra Limited with the TRD Off-Road package. Before we get into this video, though, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Larch Miller Toyota here in Murray and the Chevy here in Murray for giving me some time with both of the trucks. I'll include a link to both their websites in the description down below. And then, as always, on a side note, if you can save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So powering the Tundra is a twin turbo 3.4 liter V6 that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy 17 around town and then 22 on the highway with power outputs being 389 horsepower and then 479 pound feet of torque. Now there is also a hybrid version of this powertrain with more horsepower, more torque and gets a little bit better fuel economy. Those are the only powertrains available with the Tundra. Powering this is the 3.0 Duramax that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 23 around town and then 27 on the highway with power outputs being 305 horsepower and then 495 pound feet of torque. You can also get a 6.2 V8 with the Chevy, so you can also get a 2.7 turbo, four cylinder, and then also a 5.3 V8. It's a lot of powertrain options. Now, before we move forward with this comparison, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting off with the Toyota, this has the limited package, which is a more luxury package, but because it has the TRD off-road package, everything's been blacked out. So you have this cool contrast between the black and the white. Uh, now with the Tundra, uh, it has this massive front grille here. Some people like it, some people are not as fond of it. With the Silverado, on the other hand, I feel like it has more traditional truck styling, if that makes sense. It's a little bit of a smaller grill here. You can see chrome with the bumper. You've got fog lights on this. You've got fog lights on the Tundra too. This actually has recovery points. The Tundra still does not. <laughs> but both white trucks, let me know which one you like better with the design. Now the tire wheel setup is surprisingly similar. So 265, 60, 20 with the Tundra, 275, 60, 20 with the Silverado, so just slightly wider tires of the Silverado. But notice the silver with the wheels there, whereas the Tundra's got the blacked out TRD wheels, so a little bit different. And then notice the Tundra has big old fender flares. Silverado doesn't have anything like that. Side steps in the Silverado, no side steps on the Tundra. And then look at the chrome here on the mirror cap, whereas the mirror cap's blacked out with this. And then look at the difference with the door handle design here with both the trucks, and then you can see the limited badge here. And then it's interesting to see the cuts there in the sides of the beds very unique but a big difference is the silverado has leaf springs whereas the tundra uses a coil suspension setup here's your full side view with the tundra and then here's your full side view with the silverado now take a look at the key fobs functionality is pretty similar with the toys you have to spam the lock function to remote start it uh, so yeah now with the Toyota, I really like the texturing here with the bed, really cool. Um, but you can see we've got LED lights, you've got sliders here as well, we've got a full outlet on top of that. And decent bed space overall. I don't think this one has the auto raise function. Yeah, no, it does not have the auto raise function, but I mean, it's easy enough to lift it up. Uh, popping over the Silverado, you guys can see here, we've got protection, just like the Toyota. This one has a tonneau cover. It's very dark inside, but we do have LED bed lights, outlet, all of that. So similar functionality, and then this one does have the auto raise function. And then when it comes to rear style with the Tundra, you got like the three little tail lights design there. You can see the receiver hitch here at the bottom, um, but it's kind of boxy, but then also not at the same time. It's very interesting. Silverado, again, I feel like more traditional with the style here. And notice with the double exhaust dip set up there at the bottom, parking sensors, all of that. Now take a look at the door panel, the Silverado, you got soft touch all over. You can see like the double stacked design here. And then looking at these seats, nice trim perforated. Got the little storage cubby there. And then you got kind of nice loading floor here. Getting in's easy with those side steps. Legroom's great, a little storage pocket. You can see with the cup holders here, heated seats, all of that. Uh, and then headroom back here is good. Now take a look at the Tundra, a little bit more basic with material use there at the top, but then soft touch down below. Lots of storage there. And then I like the seats in the Tundra, really cool looking. And then storage space underneath, so a little bit different. And then getting in, you do have to step up, uh, no set step in this one. And then a little bit less legroom, actually. See the little storage here, it's a cup holders, USBs, all that. And then also headroom, it's less headroom too. And back in the Silverado here, see the soft touch here and then the wood trim down below, cool double stack design. Got your memory seat function here, automatic for the window controls, blind spot running with the mirrors. We do have an advanced four-wheel drive system in this. Uh, we also have a 
trailer tow mode, drive mode select as well. Heads up display, light controls. Let's a quick look at the heads up display. Got a pretty modern steering wheel, bunch of controls on it, including like a cruise control, pile shifters there to shift the gears. And then we do have our digital gauge cluster here in the center. And then this comes with a cool 360 camera system, really good resolution with the camera system. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, um, I mean, you can see with me pressing these buttons here, pretty quick response time, easy to use. Got a bunch of controls in here. Uh, main stuff, we actually have held descent control. You can roll it on all the windows at once. Got the tailgate function there too. Trailer brake controls. We got heated and cooled seats, dual zone climate, and you got plenty of storage in this area here. Nice trim on the center console. Wireless phone charging pad as well, little outlet. And then nice trim across the dash here. And then you got the double glove box. Nice trim on the outside again. Uh, a camera rear view mirror there, and power sliding rear window as well. Uh, no center pin this one. Payload on the Chevy is 1,487 pounds, and then they also have a tow sticker with these, 9,000 pounds. And starting up the Tundra here, as you can see. Really cool steering wheel design with the Tundra. Um, but anyways, similar controls, got like adaptive cruise control, all of that stuff. And then you actually get nicer trim up front with the Tundra compared to the back. Got all of our window controls here, got your mirror adjustments here, power fold in, they got blind spot monitoring. Got a big digital gauge cluster with the Tundra, just like the Silverado. 360 camera system, a little bit bigger view just because the screen is bigger, but yeah, just as good in terms of the viewpoints. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, again, response time is good. As you can see, it's easy to use. And then you got analog controls here for the dual zone climate. I don't know why that's on. Nobody's sitting there. Uh, heated and ventilated seats. And then you can see for the camera view, we actually have a selectable rear locking differential. The Chevys have the G80 locker, so it's uh, automatic. And then you can see with the shifter here. Traditional two-speed transfer case, no four-wheel auto like the Chevy. And then this one has multi-terrain select as well as crawl control. You got the regular drive mode select. Let's give it the TOD off-road. Got your wireless phone charging pad. And then good storage here. And I like the little pass-through window. And it's interesting, this one doesn't have like the little, it just has a top. Anyways, uh, camera rear view mirror, panoramic sunroof, and then I forgot to mention just a regular glove box, no double glove box or anything like that. Payload capacity on this is 1,390 pounds, and then towing on these is about 10,000. So when it comes to pricing, the Silverado stickers are about 70K, Tundra stickers are about 66K, and with that being said, let's see how they drive. Let's talk about visibility before we set off in the Tundra. Here's the visibility of the hood, both the mirrors, and the rest of the rear. Very open feeling interior. I also got to mention the Tundra's rear setting window opens up the whole window, whereas with the Chevy, it is just the little uh, window. It's like, a little, it's like a little, you guys know what I'm talking about, the pickup trucks. Also, trail brake controls in the Tundra here. Man, whenever I like get into a truck for the test drive portion, I feel it's all the things I forgot to walk around. I'm like, man. I did not do a good job, but you know what? Dees, what it is. Really good torque right off the bat. I talked about how much I love this powertrain ad nauseum for a turbo V6. It just, it develops torque at really low RPMs and it feels good. Like Ford's EcoBoost powertrain has a lot of torque, but it feels like you have to kind of spool things up a bit. This, on the other hand, it's just boom. It's kind of like more immediate. It's really cool. I like it quite a bit. I mean, if I kind of, <laughs> we'll get another acceleration up here in a second, but yeah, it's just a, it's just a really solid powertrain. It sounds good too for a V6, kind of has like a deep grumble to it. Weird way to describe a truck powertrain, but it's what we'll go with. Yeah, so just listen. And just so much torque. You really ride the torque. I mean, this... It's not a diesel, but this is the closest you can get to a diesel with a gas engine, I think, is how Toyota has tuned this powertrain, which it's fitting because we're comparing it to a diesel, so we'll kind of see how they compare to each other back to back. Yeah, the Tundra drives well, um, and it's reasonably priced. I mean, again, feature to feature wise, the Tundra is less money uh, compared to the Silverado with the MSRP pricing, so it is technically a better deal. So with that being said, let's pop into the Silverado, see what that is like, and see, well, which truck is best. Let us set off in the diesel so you guys can see the visibility of the hood, both the mirrors, the rest of the rear. 
and let us set off. Interesting difference right off the bat. I mean, the torque figures with them are not too different. You know, 479 pound feet in the Toyota, 495 pound feet here in the Chevy. But interestingly enough, man, that, I guess that V6 is so good because I feel like I have to get into this a little bit more than in that Toyota. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah, really good torque, obviously with the diesel. It has the cool diesel sounds too. The whoosh sound, it's fun. It's really fun. It just it drives well, it's comfortable. I'd say both the trucks are really comfortable with the suspension. And I've got pretty decent experience with both of them. I've lived with uh, both a Silverado and a Tundra for a week in the past. And you know, on road at least, you don't really notice the leaf springs in this compared to the coil in the Tundra. And let's go over a big enough bump, then you kind of notice the Tundra is a little bit more stable. But man, drives well. So, to sum things up here with the comparison, it's tough. Um, the Toyota is a better value, just objectively, in terms of you know, it has the same amount of features, actually more, because it has a panoramic center and it's less money. But when it comes to, like, the truck stuff and driving and all of that, um, man, I mean, it's tough. But what I would say is, you know, out of these two, I kind of lean more towards the Tundra, just because it drives so well. And, you know, I, I, I am looking at the money, you know? I am thinking, okay, well... I, I like how that truck drives just as much as this truck. Fuel economy on the Tundra is not going to be as good as this because the diesel, but diesel's more expensive. Diesel's more expensive to maintain. So I'm kind of like, ah, the cost is probably going to be pretty similar once you factor everything in. But the truck's less money. <laughs> so, I, but I will say is I like the like door panel material and the fit and finish in the Chevy is better than the Toyota. The Toyota, Toyota needs to bring up their, their uh, build quality with that new Tundra a little bit and the Sequoia as well. And the new Tacoma. Uh, man, I'm just... Anyways, let me know which ones you'd pick out of the bunch, but I, I think the Tundra, with this comparison, uh, edges out a win.